Hey guys, I'm Ben and welcome to this episode of Generation Tech. Alan is stuck on some desert planet somewhere, so I'll be taking this episode. A few things you don't know about me. Oh, uh, I'm British. You probably can't hear it, right? Aluminium. Now you can tell. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, the ending of Revenge of the Sith is a beautiful one. Obi-Wan Kenobi rides up to the Lars household on an EOP and hands Luke Skywalker over to his Aunt Beru. She joins Owen Lars and together they stare into the setting twin sons of Tatooine. Which probably would have burned out their retinas due to prolonged exposure to UV rays. But anyway, that's not the point of this episode. I want to talk about what happened to Obi-Wan Kenobi between episode 3 and episode 4. We know that prior to dropping off Luke on Tatooine, which is really unfair to Luke by the way, his sister gets to be a princess on freaking Alderaan. I mean, have you seen Alderaan? It's like freaking beautiful. It's like Rivendell had a baby with the Alps. Okay, let's stay on track. Before dropping Luke off on this barren world, Obi-Wan Kenobi had been informed by Yoda that he had been communicating with Qui-Gon Jinn's spirit ghost. Qui-Gon Jinn had figured out how to return from the night. Force Netherworld and had taught Yoda how to do the same. And now Yoda wanted Obi-Wan Kenobi to learn this same trait, and this became the primary focus of his life in exile. He even chose a cool fake name for himself, Ben Kenobi. Not very original. Anyway, this version of Kenobi in Exile will exclude all of the Legends content. Which is a real shame because he does some crazy stuff. Maybe we'll do a second video on this that has all that stuff in it. Anyway, according to canon, Kenobi wrote a series of journals that were meant for Luke to find that explain the story of his life on Tatooine. It was hard for Obi-Wan to stop being a Jedi. Everywhere he looked on Tatooine, people lied, cheated, and even killed. But he couldn't just casually reveal his powers because the Empire was searching for him and Darth Vader was on a personal crusade to find him. He found himself fighting boredom, unable to train Luke because Owen Lars, the freaking party pooper, wanted to protect Luke from the dangers of being a force user. So Obi-Wan instead did what he could, preventing raiders from getting close to the Lars homestead. Drought eventually hit the planet and Jabba the Hutt imposed a severe water tax. One day Obi-Wan saw a group of thugs in town with blasters forcing people to give up their water. Obi-Wan disabled their weapons and escaped, deciding never to head back to town again. One night, Kenobi felt a disturbance in the force. He wanders out into the desert and finds that Luke had chased some bandits into the desert to recover some stolen water. Predictably, the bandits had captured the eight-year-old boy and were going to make him into a slave. Kenobi defeats the bandits, but during the battle, uh, Luke gets knocked unconscious, so Kenobi takes Luke back to his home and then just leaves quietly. This wouldn't be the last time Kenobi saves Luke. Eventually the drought ends and things get back to normal on Tatooine. So one day Luke is chilling out with his friend Biggs Darklighter and he's flying the family's T-16 Skyhopper airspeeder. You got Obi-Wan watching him from afar. He sees Luke going through Beggar's Canyon at great speed with great force sensitivity, just like his father. Unfortunately, Luke crashes the airspeeder, uh, damaging it severely. Uncle Owen my least favorite character, is furious with Luke, uh, telling him he'll never fly. Kenobi sees this and makes a deal with the Jawas, telling them that he'll protect their convoy from Tusken Raiders, and in exchange, they have to secretly give Luke the parts needed for repairing the damaged airspeeder. Now, when Kenobi returns home, he's confronted by Owen Lars. This guy just loves to spoil all the fun. He returns the parts that the Jawas gifted to Luke and says, to Kenobi, stay out of Luke's life, blames him for the death of Anakin, tells him that if Luke leaves the planet, he'll probably never make it back alive, and Kenobi reluctantly has to agree with Owen Lars' assessment of the situation. Meanwhile, over at the palace of Jabba the Hutt, Jabba had been interviewing bounty hunters for hire, someone had been messing with his water tax enforcers, and the Hutt was pissed. He was going to send a giant black Wookiee by the name of Black Krasantan to go and find out exactly who that was. But unfortunately, this is where our story ends because the rest of the journals haven't been released yet. 
but keep an eye out for them. They are called from the journals of old Ben Kenobi from the Marvel comic book series aptly named Star Wars. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Generation Tech. Do leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And next time, we'll give you the Legends version of what happened to Ben Kenobi on Tatooine. Please subscribe. And if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.